It is a blessing that we're in something that God is in. I don't have to second guess. I don't have to wonder. When I investigate and probe the scriptures, I see what God say and we are fortunate. Not that we think we're better than anybody else as so many viewers try to make it, but uh, we magnify the God of heaven because we could have been in the condition that so many others are in. And I strongly advise everyone, never take for granted that your understanding is now open. We can reflect back when we didn't know. <clears throat> and there are many things that's still to be made known. And this is what I keep telling the people. I will never use the term that I, Pastor Jennings, have all the truth. No, God have all the truth. What I have so far is what God revealed to me. And I'm still looking to him to reveal more and more unto the perfect day. And if you approach God and his word in that manner, you are in keeping with the purpose of God, the agenda of God, and the will of God. When you go outside of God's will, you think there's no more knowledge to obtain, no more knowledge to receive. And that's going outside of God's will. It is God's purpose that we grow in every aspect of life. If you grow naturally, why is it you think you shouldn't grow spiritually? I repented of my sins and was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ at six years old. I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue at 11. And you mean to tell me from that time to now, there's no growth? Any woman that has a child, and now that child is 40, and she's still finding herself carrying it, burping it, changing the diapers, well, her worrying will start long ago because she know it's supposed to be, listen to what I'm saying, it's supposed to be growth and development. If it's supposed to be that naturally, glory to God, you know it's supposed to be that spiritually. What contributes to the growth of a child is this diet. What contributes to the spiritual growth of the people is your scriptural diet. Just like naturally, too much sugar is unhealthy in your diet. Spiritually, too much sugar or weak teaching is unhealthy in your diet. So viewers, we don't use no sugar. None. Because Jesus said, salt is good. You hear that? Salt is good. Salt is good. Amen. If they working up there, don't bother them. I don't mind hearing that knocking up there as long as it's working being done. Someone said, but they hear it over the telecast. That's all right. If they're up there working, praise the Lord. If they're up there playing, run them out of there. <laughs> but if they're working, that's all right. I can go back years later and listen at these messages and hear all the knocking up there. And I can say, you know, I remember when they was up there working and we wasn't up there yet. 
Amen. So I look back on these things and glorify God for his goodness towards us. Let me remind all of our beloved brothers and sisters, your youth conference is coming up. First convocation for the year 2021. Don't miss it. Don't get lazy and sit home because you've been watching us on YouTube for so long now. And you sitting back yarning with your Lipton tea. <laughs> watching me in your jammies and your slippers and your robe. Get on out here to God's house, you lazy thing. Come on out. Even since the pandemic start, we've been hammering, preaching, and many still been faithful coming to God's house and the word of God has been preached. We didn't lay back and just stay out. Some of you now, you're scared. Pastor, I don't want to die. Death is the will of God. You can die without a virus. And please don't put your confidence in a vaccine. The power of life and death is in the hands of your Lord. Right. It's not in the hands of the American government in a vaccine. If you think a vaccine going to keep you alive, you can die while the needle's in your arm. You better come on and get right with God now. All right, uh, brother. James, this is up to date. All right, let's update them. We, they, they still getting themselves together. All right, 10 went down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ here in headquarters, 52. 52 in San Bernardino, California, five in Fresno, one in Apple Valley, California, two in Detroit, 10 in Baltimore, two in Charlotte, one in Rocky Mount, one in Columbia, five in Atlanta, two in Houston. Thank God, one in Memphis. So that's a blessing. You see how the thing just keep moving? You wouldn't think it's a pandemic in the earth. Pandemic or no pandemic, it is the will of God that souls be saved and get right with him. And viewers, I advise you, if you're wise, take advantage of this time while you have it. In fact, let me brief you. Comes to mind, if I'm correct, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and begin at verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, we'll start at verse 1. All right, follow me and listen well. Dare any of you. Dare any of you. Having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust. Yes. And not before the saints. Yes. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? Yes. And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Well, judge yourselves, church, that ye be not judged. Right. When the Bible says, dare any of you, go before who? Go before the law. Read the whole thing. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust. Ah, uh, don't just drop off at law. Right. It's a certain kind of law that is addressing. That's right. Go before the law. Go, be go before the unjust. And the unjust. And not before the saints. Did you hear that? That's right. There are some laws that are unjust. And we want to stay out of those type of courtrooms. Because they got to balance out with the law is made for the lawless. So all laws are not unjust. If it was, then God could not tell us to obey magistrates, which are the laws of the land. So listen at the language of the Bible and get the full sentence in its completion. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 1. Listen. Dare any of you. Hold it. The reason why God say I dare you because he knows scriptures rectify matters in the church. That's right. That's why he say, get up in verse again. It's 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 1. That's why he say, dare. Dare any of you. God is challenging you. You know, many church people don't wait for the word of God to rectify matters. It's best to wait for the word of God to rectify it. That way, God will bring order, discipline, and you will take God's law above everybody else's law. That's right. When you run and do things on your own, well, a mess might be made. Yeah. Are you listening? That's right. 
So God is instructing us. God uh, is advising us. Right. Uh -huh. Dare any of you. Dare any of you. Having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust. Wait a minute. Go to the law before, before the, the unjust. unjust. Even God knows there's some courts that's unjust. Some judges are unjust. That's right. Some lawyers, oh, you know many of them is unjust until Jesus said, woe unto you lawyers. Oh, yes. Amen. So uh, if there's a matter that needs to be rectified, that's why when people come to me with matters, I go to the book of law yeah. and order. This is law and order. <laughs> that's right. And when I go to the law, the book of law and order, I take the matters at hand. And see what the Word of God says about it. That's right. And then let the Bible solve it. That's right. That way I don't take sides with no one. That's right. I stay in a neutral corner between the Old Testament and the New. That's right. Thank God and not taking sides. I don't care. I don't care if it's my children or my wife. Yeah. I'm going to bring God's law. In the book of 2nd Esther, chapter 7. And at verse 19. Says what? And he said unto me, there is no judge above God. That holy, did you hear? Amen. How plain is that? <laughs> That's right. Give chapter and verse again. Second Esther chapter 7 and we're at verse 19. Begin at verse 18. At verse 18. What is it? Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things. The righteous shall suffer straight things. And hope for why? And hope for why? For they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight thing. Yes. And, sh and yet shall not see the why. Uh -huh. And he said unto me, there is no judge above there God. There is no judge. Above God. Greater than God. And none that hath understanding above the high. Do you hear that? Amen. So when you take matters in the court, the court don't have the understanding of God. No. They just have it written in God we trust. And you know that's a lie. <laughs> that's right. So God wants us to trust him right. above the courthouse for decision-making. That's right. Now, we accept the courthouse when their laws about a matter is in compliance and full agreeance yeah. with the laws of God about the same matter. That's right. You see, sometimes the courts lean to emotion. And sometimes the jury lean to emotion. Right. And a lot of times, both lawyers are trying to placate the emotions of the jury. <laughs> God ain't playing the emotions of nobody. That's right. When God speaks, it's that. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Now, in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3. Listen. Now we're at verse 24. Follow me. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Many are deceived by, you see, the, the reason how, let me show you another way how the courts is unjust. <clears throat> a man or a woman can be guilty. And being guilty, in some cases, the attorney that represent them yeah. know they're guilty. Right. But the attorney now works hard to make the guilty have an innocent appearance. Right. They get the guilty free. That's right. And by God's law, that's unjust. That's right. Because that's hiding under a false pretense. And an evil suspicion. Listen. Now still in the book of Ecclesiastes now, 3. Now, hear me. Amen. If Williams, if I'm his attorney, mm -hmm. and I'm a holy attorney, and he done told me, yeah, I murdered that man. I murdered his wife, and I murdered his sons. Right. But Mr. Jennings, you got to get me off. Right. Huh. <laughs> I can't look at my lawyer's fee that he gave me. That's right. I may charge him. $3,000 an hour. That's right. That's some money. But uh, if he already told me he's guilty, then 
when I come before the court and the jury, I'm going to tell the jury, ladies and gentlemen, by faith, do you see this sign upon the courtroom? It says, in God we trust. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me bring my argument. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen of the jury, because that sign hangs over me, yeah. it challenged my sincerity. Yeah. It challenged my honesty. And it challenged my honesty in the law of God versus the laws of the land. Because if I trust God, ladies and gentlemen, then God's wisdom is greater than the judge that sit on this bench, ladies and gentlemen, that preside over this case. <laughs> right. Now, I know as a lawyer of Mr. Williams, I suppose to present him as if he's innocent. Right. But ladies and gentlemen, he already told me. Yeah. That he murdered the man. Yeah. He murdered the man's wife. Yeah. And he raped the daughter. No. So I refuse because that sign hang over me. In God we trust. So if I trust God, then I must admit, ladies and gentlemen of the jewelry, <laughs> that the wisdom of God that I have the greatest confidence in. He's more wiser than your honor. He's more smarter than your honor. He's more deeper than your honor. And God's judgment is infallible, and the judge judgment may not be infallible. That's right. So, ladies and gentlemen, he's guilty. Yeah. <laughs> if you choose to reduce his sentence, that's up to you. But not by any means, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, would I make this heathen, wicked murderer appear like he's innocent. Lock Williams up, Junior. Lock him up. <laughs> now, That's right. Jesus said, Woe to you unto you lawyers. That's right. When the Bible says woe concerning a thing, I'm sorry for you because there's something coming that's going to work against your flesh. I'm sorry for you. There's a threat towards you. And he said woe unto you. Give chapter and verse. In the book of St. Luke chapter 11 and verse 46. And he said, woe unto you also. I can hear the viewers now. I'll never get that crazy preacher to represent me in court. No baptize in the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost, speaking in tongue, holy, sanctified lawyer mm. is allowed by scriptural law yeah. to make wrong right. That's right. That's You're right. not allowed. That's right. I believe someone said, prove it. Give me the book of Isaiah. Give me the book of Isaiah, good and evil, darkness and light. Darkness and light. Let me prove this by the Bible. I, I want all you attorneys, all you attorneys, and all you lawyers that are watching, listen to this order in the court. That's right. Order in the court now, then we go back to what Jesus said, woe unto you lawyers. All right, follow me and get me. Isaiah chapter 5 and read verse 20. Woe unto them that oh, call... Oh, wait, 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 woe, wait, wait, wait. We woe. got it again. Woe unto them. We got it again. Amen. Woe! Woe unto them. Unto them. That call evil good. I can't call that fella good and he's a murderer. That's right. And, and, I, and he admit that he done it. That's right. I can't present his deed like he done something good. Yeah. I must present it the way it look in the eyes of God. That's right. From the perspective of God. Right. By the words of God. That's right. All right. Woe unto them that call evil good. Do you see the difference between God and man? Mm. 
Woe unto them that call evil good. And good evil. And good evil. That put darkness for light. That put darkness for light. And light for darkness. And light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet. That put, this is so plain. Amen. That put bitter for sweet. And sweet for bitter. And sweet for bitter. God is speaking against everyone that try to re reverse uh, the reality of a thing and them. try to make it appear as if it's something that is not. That's right. That's right. Amen. If I'm a Holy Ghost filled, sanctified, holy lawyer, and here you've been caught stealing, yeah. mm. shoplifting with the item right in your hand, I'd be a hypocrite to say, Your Honor, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen of the jewelry, uh, this young 16-year-old didn't really steal it. Mm. They just stumbled upon it and found it. Yeah. And here's the videotape is showing. Now do you see what I'm talking? That's right. Many churches teach you the sin to be a lawyer. No, it's not. No. The Apostle Paul called for Zenus the lawyer. Zenus, that's right. Some folks say a lawyer have to lie. Lying is a choice. No. You don't have to lie. Bring Zenus the lawyer. Do you hear this? In the book of Titus chapter 3 and verse 13. Bring Zenus the lawyer. And Apollos on their journey and Apollos diligently. Apollos on their journey what? Diligent. Dilig make, it, make it quick. That nothing be warning unto that them. That nothing be warning. Yeah. All right. Back in St. Luke now, chapter 11 and verse 46. Yes. And he said unto them, Woe unto you also, woe ye lawyers. Woe unto who? Woe unto you also, ye lawyers. And you know, Jesus' teaching got everybody. Every, that's right. He didn't let the lawyer off the hook. That's right. Uh -huh. For ye laid men with burdens grievous to be born. You laid men with burdens grievous to be born. And ye yourselves touch, touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. Yes. Now in the book of St. Luke, chapter 11, down at verse 52. Uh-huh. Woe unto you, lawyers. Woe unto you, lawyers. For ye have taken away the key of knowledge. They go to law school mm. to learn how supposedly to represent people. Yeah. That's right. Many men and women are in color. They took a plea bargain. They couldn't afford a lawyer. That's right. So the, the court appointed them one. That's right. yeah. And uh, port, the court appointed lawyer many times wasn't looking at the client, was looking at the court. That's yeah. right. And sometimes pressure yeah. men and women to plead guilty when they were innocent. That's right. So this is why you find God many times saying, whoa. whoa. I remember I was ready to go out of town somewhere, and there was a young white gentleman, very clean. I mean, he, he was clean, well-dressed. And he came to me and said, aren't you Reverend Jennings? Well, they don't know no better. I said, uh, yes, I'm Pastor Jennings. He said, I'm attorney so-and-so, and he said, I must say, I enjoy your messages, sir. You have, you have actually made me rethink my presentation of law and how I handle cases. He said, well, let me just tell you, I'm a little more honest now. <laughs> little more honest. Amen. All lawyers are not bad, but some of them are straight up money hungry, rotten, no good liars. That's right. That's right. Hey, Amen. That's right. I, I, before I went to business school, when I got out of high school, I actually sincerely thought about being a lawyer. I believe I would have been a good one too, brother. Yeah. I thought about being a lawyer and get you on the stand so I can roast you. <laughs> well, I end up being a lawyer anyway. That's right. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm a spiritual lawyer. That's right. And I got a caseload. Oh, yeah. There ain't no maybe so about it, brother. I got a caseload. Oh, yes. And uh, the one that judge over all the cases, all the situations, 
is God himself. I, I can trust all the decisions that he made. Yeah. Listen. Woe unto you, lawyers. Yes. For ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Uh -huh. Ye entered in not in ye entered not in yourselves. Yes. And them that were entering in, ye hindered. Ye hindered. Amen. So a lot of times the worst enemy of some clients is their own lawyer. Because of unrighteous dealings. Listen. Now in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 8. What is it? Because of unrighteous because dealings. Because of unrighteous dealings. Injuries. They are underhanded. And they are underhanded. That's right. And as a result of such injuries. And riches got by deceit. Many policemen have planted drugs. That's right. Planted guns. Planted unlawful things. That's right. You know, sometimes, not all, but sometimes policemen get desperate to solve a case. Lingering too long. Because the community is crying out yes. to arrest somebody. That's right. So to get the community off their back, they start planting drugs, yeah. planting weapons. Yeah. So that young man or that young girl can go to jail. That's right. Some police are so wicked, they tell their young boy, if you don't plead guilty, we can cause a lot of problems for your family. That's true. Only hell-bound men like that. That's right. So a lot of them that advertise, what is that that they have written on their cars to serve and protect? Honor, protect, and serve. Some live up to it. Yeah. Some. Some. Yeah. Some. Some. Not many. Yeah. That's true. Some honor the dollar. Yeah. Some protect their own. That's right. And some serve only their own pockets and their own interests. That's right. Not all. That's right. It's the same way with many preachers. Some don't serve God. They serve their own interests. Yeah. They don't preach the word of God, which is for your protection. That's right. And they have no honor. No honor. Glory to God whatsoever. Right. Go back to the book uh, as you read about the judges. God being the righteous judge. The righteous judge, that's right. Back in 2nd Esther's Second chapter Esther's. 7. Amen. Chapter and verse. Back in 2nd Esther's chapter 7. And at verse 19. All right. And he said unto me, there is no judge above God. I want everybody that are listening to remember this. Yeah. Out of all courthouses, yeah. out of all court cases, out of all the men and women that's on a Supreme Court. That's right. There is a court. That's right. Higher than the Supreme Court. Oh, yeah. That nobody, glory to God, can debate with. That's right. He don't need the opinion of no lawyers. No. He don't have no desire for the ideology right. of any other judge. That's right. He's so exalted. Yeah. He know that all his judgment is perfect. That's right. True. Righteous. That's right. And this judge don't go into the chambers to hear any fellow judge's opinion. That's right. There is one lawgiver. Glory to God. Amen. Eh? That's right. There's one. What? There is one lawgiver. Yeah. Chapter and verse now. Come on. St. James chapter 4 and we're at verse 12. What did he say? There is one lawgiver. There's one lawgiver. Who is able to save and to destroy. The lawgiver said, thou shalt not kill. That's right. He said, don't kill. Amen. That's right. The court said, what if she was raped? Mm. That's right. Emotion said, let her get an abortion. Yeah. God says, thou shalt not kill. Don't kill it. That's right. That's Did right. you hear me? In the book of Romans 13 and verse 9. Pastor Jen, did you mean to tell me? Don't you ask Pastor Jen is nothing. That's right. Don't ask you nothing. Don't you ask me nothing. That's right. Romans 13 and verse 9, thou shalt not kill. Pastor Jim, don't you, don't even call my name. <laughs> That's right. Give chapter and verse. Romans chapter 13 and we're at verse 9. The law, the Democrats. Amen. Justify. 
Abortion. Yeah. And when I hear of different situations, I do understand right. why some abortions take place. Right. A woman don't want a child if that man done forced herself on her. That's right. She don't want it. Hey Amen. Mm -hmm. It's like I don't want that music from Mother Johnson's phone. <laughs> hey Amen. So I wouldn't say you wouldn't say that if that was your own child. Mm. I to keep me from being judged by the terror mm. of God. That's right. That is what I'm trying to get over to you. That's it. It hurts. That's right. If my daughter got raped, I'm going hunting. Come on. That's right. Come on. I'm not going to be hunting wabbit either. <laughs> because as the protector of my house, I want to go hunting. That's right. Then if I catch the fella, by God's law, mm. God tells me what I can't do. Yeah. And he said what? Thou shalt not kill. But suppose I got him in my hand. Thou shalt not kill. Mm. Mm. Suppose I got him by the neck. Thou shalt not kill. Suppose I found a, a bat. Thou shalt not kill. Suppose I'm standing over him and got a brick in my hand. Thou shalt not kill. Suppose I find a bottle and break it, and all the edges are nice and sharp. Thou shalt not kill. My Lord, my Lord. Mm. Yes. Now do you understand? Amen. Mm. My emotions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's forbidden by God's law. That's right. To motivate me to make decisions. That's right. Someone said there ain't no Bible. In the God Bible, says, be ye angry. Give chapter and verse. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 26. Be ye angry. But what? And sin not. Mm. Now that'd be hard for me to obey. I'm being very honest. Oh yes. I'm not a hypocrite, and I refuse to put myself above higher than uh, I am. That's right. I have to say, like Paul, I'm a man of like passion as you are. That's right. And preach that you should turn from these dumb idols <laughs> and trust in the living God. Somebody to rape my daughter, mm. rob my son, mm. or harass. Sisters in the church or brothers? That's right. Somebody come in the church and think they're going to hold the church up and rob the church? Amen. Mm. Amen. 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 You got Nikki from Huntington Park and you got Pastor Jennings from the <laughs> Lord. That's right. Amen. That's right. The Lord says, Be ye angry, but what? And sin not. I had no things on working on all this. My Lord. Mm. That one scripture, that scripture, give us permission mm. to be angry, be angry, to be emotional yeah. with a cap on it, and sin not. Be angry, but Maybe. I'm limited. That's right. Your anger is not allowed to exceed God's order. That's right. What is God calling for? Emotional discipline, emotional order. That's right. Because it is the nature of the flesh that anger incites sin. That's right. Am I right, I said? Amen. 
Anger incites sin. Right. Now when the Bible says, be ye angry. And sin not. That mean in any manner. You can't even sin in thought. My Lord helps. I can't even think of killing you. That's right. That's John right. said, Pastor Jenny, you're getting ridiculous. The Bible says the very thought of foolishness is sin. It's sin. The thought of foolishness is sin. It says the thought of it. The thought of, in Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 9. Says what? The thought of the foolishness. The thought of it. Is sin. If I think of how I want to kill you. Mm. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. <laughs> <laughs> you out there that are watching in here. <laughs> the, brother, the brother said, <laughs> when I mentioned about if you think of it, one brother said, do it without thinking. <laughs> Glory to God. Don't think, just do it. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. But Amen. it's still, even if you do it. Even if you do it. Amen. Amen. You can't even plan how you will kill him. That's right. Why? Is that Bible? Oh, yes. He knoweth the intent. Oh, Lord, thou hast searched me. Oh, Look here. In Psalms here. 139 and verse 1. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Thou hast searched me. D brother, this is a soul searching message. Oh, yes. This message put our temperament mm. in check. That's right. Our attitude in check. That's right. It makes us uh, reevaluate our emotions. Yes. And call us and call our hand. That's right. And what we want to do. That's right. What we intend to do. Yeah. What we got in mind to do. Yeah. And the reason why God have an outline like this, he want us to understand that regardless of how we feel about anything, anything, keep him in mind. That's right. That's right. Because if you don't keep him in mind, yeah. you're going to run on your own. Yes, you will. Amen. That's right. Listen.